So in terms of sailing it, I'm saying this at the moment with an autopilot, and I think if you can sail something with an autopilot, then that means you actually really know what's going on with it. So my autopilot control head is down here, and the noise you can hear is the autopilot uh, going on, this little Raymarine system. And we can see here that the wind is at 52 degrees to starboard. So the autopilot is following a wind angle at the moment. It's using the anemometer at the top of the mast to uh, calculate where the wind's coming from. It's holding a steady angle. And speed wise, we are doing down here, we've got true wind speed of 10 knots and we've got 5.3 over the ground. That's not too bad. I started to slow the boat down because I knew I was going to film in this. Um, and I've got to say, I think my true wind speed is um, a little bit out at the moment. Having a look out there, I'd say 10 is absolutely the maximum. I'd say 10 is probably what it is at the top of this 120 foot mast. Down on the deck, I'm not quite feeling 10 knots. Um, but the Code Zero was pushing us along earlier in like literally five knots of breeze. Now the apparent wind angle that it's sailing at, uh, I've got the, um, the autopilot sailing here and we see it's on wind 52 south. And if we go to menu, we go down here to wind vane type, and you see it's on apparent, and that's very, very important. And if you haven't used a code zero before, or if you're not used it very much on your boat, what it can do for you is absolutely amazing. In the situation we've got going on here now, I'm ready to put a jib up, and that's why I've jumped into this recording now, because I wanted to show you that transition from one sail to the other, uh, and do it kind of in real time. But a sail that can have a 25 ton boat like this moving in uh, five knots of breeze at five knots, there's a, there's a good amount of magic in that. <laughs> now this sail is getting towards the top of what it can do actually for an upwind uh, angle like this. And we're gonna be moving to a jib in just a little while. But I thought there's an opportunity here to show you like what goes on with a Code Zero sail. If you're driving it yourself, what you're trying to do is you want to find out over time what is the angle that your Code Zero sail works at. And I know now that as long as my autopilot is not too far out, as long as my anemometer is not too far out, 52 degrees is a very, very good angle. Now, I look at the top of the mast, yeah, it's sort of indicate up there, that's about right. So this is very, very tight angle for it. What happens with a Code Zero sail is that it, it is an apparent wind monster. It creates apparent wind, it gets the boat moving. You have to have the sail trimmed to the angle it's going to be at when it's most efficient, okay? So there's another way of driving this sail where you kind of keep it quite full, um, ease the main down a little bit. You have curved control surfaces on your main and on your uh, Code Zero, and the sail will give you some performance, but it will never give you everything that you really can get from it. The main thing to understand with a Code Zero sail is it's gotta be pretty flat, and it's gotta be pretty hard at the front. Now, I would say that my luff on this sail is not tight enough. This boat has uh, come to me only a very short period ago, and we spent a lot of that time not being able to use it through the winter in Nova Scotia. It does have the uh, fittings on the front to have a hydraulic downhaul to actually pull this sail tight, which I think is a very appropriate thing for this kind of boat. We'll be investigating how to get that sorted out back on the boat. But if you're doing it on your boat, just making the halyard really, really tight is very important so you can get the front of it almost as tight as you'd see on a jib. The clue of the sail, as always, you want to have a sheet angle which is coming up and bisecting the clue, an angle which will go up and meet the, uh, the, the, the luff of the sail halfway up. So the angle looks not too bad there. It comes up through there, goes across and hits that sail about 15 meters off the deck, about uh, 45 feet off the deck. And that's about right because I know the luff measurement's 90 feet, about 30 meters. So angles are good. Everything to do with the Code Zero, the turning blocks on the side deck, the blocks themselves, the winch that it goes back to, fittings on the fore deck, everything needs to be really, really strong. There is a huge amount of force in these sails, a huge amount of tension in everything they do, and they 
they get their power from the fact that they're very, very flat. They're very, very hard. And if you um, start to put one of these onto a boat that's not had one before, all sorts of things can start to break. So everything's got to have backing plates. It's got to be really, really strong. And it's got to be designed for code zero work. Now this sail is actually running out on the end of our bowsprit, as you saw. That bowsprit is very, very short. It's actually a flat deck with side panels on it, made of all made of carbon fiber, and it's got a very, very strong bob stay on the bottom of it, which I replaced just before we left Southampton. So I know that there's no way that bowsprit is gonna to start to wanna to come up. But if you just connected that onto a normal bowsprit, it'd be very likely you'd snap it. In terms of setting it, you'll get to know what is the setting for your sail. And it's upwind mode is like, it, you click it into that upwind mode and that's it. And then you drive the boat from the helm. You don't trim a code zero when you're going upwind. It does what it does. And then when the wind speed changes or you wanna get a different uh, uh, course or something like that, then you trim the sail. But if it's just get us going upwind, then you just bring it in pretty damn tight close to the side of the boat. We can go over here and have a look. And once it's pretty close, pretty tight, there we go. The clue is only like two feet maybe off the off the shrouds there. And this is on an 80 foot boat. Let me just clip onto the port deck. And just for those who are watching and for those who are listening, I'm clipped onto the high side and then I'm crossing the fore deck and I've got my uh, clip here, my tether is under tension. So as I come to the side of the boat, I'm already fully under tension and I can't then slip and fall over the side of the boat. Now I am wearing a Timo um, back tow life jacket, which if I was to go over the side of the boat and be in the water, I could pull the extra toggle here underneath the left hand side of the jacket and I would be then dragged alongside the boat down there next to the water. But the thing to remember on this boat is, even though that looks very, very close, that's still four or five feet down. I would be in the water four feet down from the tow rail. It's not a good position, although I'd have a lot more chance of saving myself with this Timo back tow life jacket on than anything else. But we don't want to get in that situation. So clip on the high side and then move to the low side already under tension. So yeah, we see we got just a couple of feet, a couple of feet gap there on the clue. We see my halyard up there. This sail is not cut for this boat. So we can see that the, uh, there's quite a lot of halyard hanging out of the mast there. Oh, maybe we can run it as a staysail. <laughs> but the, if we're not using it here, you know, where are we using it? So we can hear this creaking here. This is the halyard complaining as it stretches and it's a one-to-one -one spinnaker halyard on this boat. It's something that really needs to get changed. It needs to go from two to one so that we can get proper tension on things and deploy the load differently. The other thing that um, is uh, something to consider with this kind of boat, look at that creaking and moving, is that you might get halyard locks. That removes a lot of the compression forces off the mast so that you can uh, put curve in your mast, you can shape your mast, you can take forces out of it that doesn't need to have uh, um, acting on it. It can just be uh, doing the job it needs to do, which is elevate the sails into the sky rather than having to be all about uh, bending under the um, like archer's string, which is uh, running down the inside of it in all your main and uh, code zero halyards. All right, so we're getting to a point now where I need to get onto that jib, which is positioned on the foredeck. So we're gonna throw this thing away. And the thing I'd say about code zeros and driving them, I'm gonna do a video uh, over on Patreon, which is gonna be about um, driving the code zero sail and uh, how to get maximum performance out of it and looking at trim and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, go over to patreon.com forward slash the mariner and you can sign up there it's just five dollars a month to sign up to support the youtube channel and the uh, podcast and if you're into uh, seamanship and you want to learn more about sail trim and all those things it's twenty dollars a month and then you can get access to the videos and the extra blogs and the extra content from me right yeah there's definitely enough wind here now for the jib to start to work and i know that coming up ahead the weather system that's ahead here is um uh, going to be 
a bit heavier, so I'm going to be getting onto that jib nice and early. I've got one reef in the main. I'm sailing this single-handed. I know there's uh, more weather coming. We can see these cumulus clouds. And so uh, I don't want to be in a situation where if I start to get overpowered that the main will round me up. I want to be uh, in a situation where it's under control. And I can do that on that, this boat by having one reef in the main. But if you want to learn more about these hits and tips, if you want to learn how to get the best from the code zero, the angles, how to stop yourself from going way off course by just following the uh, apparent wind all the time, how to get it to stay on the course you want, slow the boat down and get the right angle, that's all going to be over on Patreon. But I'm going to sit the camera on my head, and we're going to put the sail away and we'll put the jib up, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you in the next one.